All right, we're at Tafta, Donald, South Carolina. Let's see what's going on in here. And here's the man right here. It's Pat Tafta. You know him. You saw him at the MP engine battle. Pat, good morning to you. Good morning. Excellent. Let's see what's inside, all right? All right, yes, come on in. Here we go. All right, Rob, we're here in uh, Taft Incorporated, our precision machine shop in Dallas, South Carolina. Uh, we do all kind of manufacturing and machining in here with 30 CNC's. We have grinders, lasers, milling machines, uh, pretty well anything you need in uh, manufacturing business if you have it. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of expertise in uh, precision products and uh, we cater to the industry in the area and around the country people send us stuff to uh, machine for Volkswagens, uh, heads, blocks, uh, precision uh, fabricating on different items. Okay, we have uh, Josh McQueen setting up to machine these heads for the 94. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. These were bought at 90.5, uh -huh. so I'm having to remachine them for 94. That's what we're All right, Pat, looks like we found the secret room. Tell me what's going on here. Well, this is one area where we got some uh, OE rods and some cranks and stuff like that. And we have other areas with other stuff. This just got filled up, and now we put stuff in other places. But uh, we've come back here and picked some rods and uh, rebuild them. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody wants uh, empty rods or our rods, we can sell them those. Mm -hmm. We also use this room here to put case savers in engine blocks, and uh, we call this our, our block area. And mm -hmm. we do some stuff next door, but this is usually set up in here just to put case savers in the blocks. And we, we, we line bore the blocks mm -hmm. and bore the uh, for big bore, put small studs, big studs, whatever customer wants back in. Beautiful. So you're working with people, lots of different budgets, lots of different objectives, but it sounds like everybody gets kind of a, a custom Tafta treatment depending what they want. That's right. We try to we try to meet the customer needs. Everybody don't have a lot of money to throw at it, but they really love their Volkswagen. They want it back on the road. So we look at the budget mining, and some people come in and say, no, I don't want, I want the full blown. Let's do everything we can do and give me the most most I can get for the dollar, and, and we do that too. So we do valve grinds. Uh, uh, most of the time we're putting new heads on motors, but we do have people come in and say, let's let's save a few dollars, mm -hmm. and grind the valves, put seats, whatever you need to do to the heads, and uh, and try to save them a little bit of money if they don't need to buy all brand new stuff. And you're doing all that right here at Tafta? Yes. Pat's Bug Shop yes. Incorporated, Donald, South Carolina. That's right. Nice. Okay, we're gonna talk about our Dyno engine, if you put on the engine battle that we competed in, had a good time. Uh, if was great out there. Uh, we, we enjoyed ourselves. Now we got this motor running uh, two days before we had to ship it and it <laughs> sounded good, but we had no way of checking, checking the engine at, at top end with a load on it. Uh, uh, we put a 101.6 millimeter piston in this engine, so it's a it's a little bit different. It's, it's very complicated to do all that. Mm -hmm. This engine we wanted to try to do as best we could for the battle out there. And we did not win the battle. The, the upper RPMs fell off and we decided that we got back home, we'd just buy us a dyno. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we did, we bought a stuff to dyno and uh, got it set up now to uh, test and tune motors and check horse power rating too. Cause you really need to put a load you know, a customer buys an engine and uh, they take it home, put it in a car, and they drive road and it's sputtering when they give it the gas. Uh, you can you can tune it here with a load on it, and mm -hmm. it'll emulate driving it down the road under load. So yep. that's a that's a tuning advantage of having a dyno. So we now have a dyno, and uh, what we have on the dyno now is our uh, uh, new fan housing system for the Volkswagen that we make. And, that's uh, beautiful, Pat. 
it is uh, center mounted, uh -huh. and we wanted it in the center to make it look more like a 911, but mm -hmm. uh, it's distributorless, so there's no distributor in this motor. We have a reluctor wheel. We make a steel pulley that has a reluctor wheel for a magnetic pickup, mm -hmm. uh, crank trigger, and we use LS coils on it to uh, oh, look fire, at that. fire each one of the cylinders. Uh, this is programmable timing. So it's something we wanted to do, and it's probably not for everybody, but you know, if you, you see something you like, then you like it. So <laughs> this is our version of a uh, new fan system. Rob, we'll talk about this motor, which is going to be a stroker for a, uh, a, a customer who had a little convertible drive every day, so we're going to make it a reliable uh, stroker engine with one two barrel empty carburetor on it and uh, get him happy to. He says, I want it to live and I want to drive it every day. So I talk to people about what do you want to do? What's mm -hmm. your end goal? You know, if you want a lot of power for a short period of time, you can do that. But you can make, keep it reliable by doing a little bit instead of too much. Uh, so this is going to be a, uh, a little convertible car. That's mm -hmm. just another tear down we're doing here for another stock rebuild. Okay. And uh, this is a racing transmission I'm tearing down and making it for a drag car, mm -hmm. changing his gear ratios, super diffs, axles, things like that to get him ready for race. And uh, this will be a 2332 stroker with an linear block. Uh, uh, we got the EP stage three heads and stuff we're putting on it and a uh, 48 carburetor, EP carburetor for it. So that is uh, an engine we're doing. And uh, we, we try to help customers decide what they need, why they need it. And sometimes you can convince a customer to do a different scenario than what they had in mind after you talk to them about the reliability, the service factor, gas mileage, and so on like that. You can help them make a smart decision on what kind of engine they need for their car. Perfect. This is a 1968 Beetle that's got a oval one, a 55 oval one section in the back to give it that antique look. Uh, I also cut the dash out and took my laser and uh, lasered a panel to mimic the, uh, the oval when the dash look. So I'm trying to make me a hot rod for the street. I'm putting a Debbie Duck lid on the back and the, the old apron's front and rear. Uh, so it will look like a, an oval window mm -hmm. to the average person, but the enthusiast will say, it's got a metal sunroof. Right. Ain't, that ain't what comes in an oval. So it is a 68 body mm -hmm. that's converted over now to a 55 oval. In the, so we'll put a 2332 motor that I've already started on at the shop with some empty parts, auto linear block, and so yep. on and so on. So that'll go in here shortly. All right, we look forward to seeing it, Pat. Thank you. As you see PBS racing, that came from Pat's Bug Shop. That's mm -hmm. where we were Pat's Bug Shop in the years. And then we started racing. We wanted a logo, so mm -hmm. we said we'll be PBS racing. And uh, this is a kind of unique rail dragster that has a uh, Lenco uh, air shifted transmission. Oh, wow. Uh, it's got the 12 boat Chevrolet narrowed rear end in it. Mm -hmm. the, the 12 boat is a faster ring and pinion. The VW ring and pinion is in the center, which nothing is faster than that. Mm -hmm. The Chevrolet is a good strong rear end, and it's not as low as a nine inch forward. Nine inch forward is really strong, but a lot of drag. So we tried to make a car that uh, would service our needs in the drag strip. And what was this putting out when uh, you said it was built and supercharged and nitrous? What was it, uh, what kind of power? Dynoed, never dynoed it. I mm -hmm. mean, where you go to have something dynoed when you, uh, you, you have a hard time finding somebody that can dyno a rail dragster right sure. here, and I didn't yep. want to take it, so I, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. I figured it was probably close to 2,000 horsepower. <laughs> okay, we're in front of my trophy cabinet. I was racing Volkswagen Karma gear back in the 80s. Helps war records with it and uh, collected quite a few bit of trophies uh, over the years of racing. I'd say so. This is uh, quite a lot of hardware, Pat. Yeah, well, we, we did a little bit of racing here and there, but we did a lot of the IVW8 uh, circuits that were fairly close. We did uh, airplane engines. We made a two cylinder, four cylinder for the ultralights and experimental planes. Wow, very impressive.